Randy T Bird. Sunday morning, early, cool air. It's going to be a nice day getting out early. As we do this time of year, it's June. We had some uh, brutal hot earlier this week 110, 112. Pretty warm. But today, as of like yesterday, yesterday was 93 degrees and today is supposed to be 97. Any day under 100 degrees in June is a gift. Hell, any day under 100 degrees for the next three months is a gift. So, that I wanted to catch some cool air uh, while you can. Cool air in June is a rare thing. Uh, Yesterday was my mom's 90th birthday. We drove to Tucson and uh, took the boy and uh, my wife and I went down there, spent the day with my mom and uh, uh, she's hanging in pretty good for 90. Uh, doing all right, still has her uh, all her mental faculties. Uh, you know, her body's getting a little worn down, but you know, at 90, I think you've earned it. And uh, I feel really blessed and lucky to have my mother at my age, uh, I'm going to be, I'm 65, so, and my mom's still hanging in there, and, uh, you know, anybody, any man that tells you he's not a mama's boy is lying to you, so, as a friend of mine used to say, or still says, anyway, happy birthday, mom, and, uh, many more, I told her she's gonna, she's gonna be a hundred, and she said, I hope not, but I said, well, Let's let's go for that. 100 years old. So anyway, big changes and uh, well, not big changes, just legal changes in our life. Uh, I haven't talked a whole lot about this because it's been going through the courts and everything. But uh, in 2015, my wife and I took uh, custody of our grandson, who was at the time was not quite two and a half years old. Uh, there's some issues with the parents. Uh, let's just leave it at this. Unable to to uh, decently care for the child. Well, these years, three years plus years of going through the court system finally culminated with uh, the final adoption on Wednesday of this week. And so, the boy, whose name is Nathan, is uh, now permanently in our custody. Uh, we are the adopted parents now and we no longer have the Department of Child Safety in our lives. Uh, we don't have to be inspected. We don't have to be visited. We are uh, totally free of that system. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm, a, I'm kind of a person who values my privacy and I really did not like having state authorities uh, in my life uh, but I had to admit that uh, uh, the, the folks that we've had involved with us in the last couple years have been really decent people and uh, they've been very respectful of us in the beginning it was not it felt like we had to jump through a lot of hoops that the uh, birth parents did not and it was kind of frustrating any of you out there that maybe had, had similar situations you know what I'm talking about and but you know what, uh, having a smaller child at our age is a bit of a challenge, uh, but you know what, he deserves a rich life, a full life, and uh, he wasn't going to get it. So that's what we're going to give him. So I don't get to ride my motorcycle as much as I would like, but we get out. Uh, my wife is very tolerant of my sanity and uh, lets me, you know, doesn't give me much grief. Uh, she doesn't ride with me anymore. Uh, that's okay, you know, maybe I'll get her back on the bike one of these days, but that's all right. And uh, that's her prerogative, and uh, she's a very loving grandmother and mother and uh, a wonderful wife, and so much for that. And so, kind of a celebratory ride today. We drove to Tucson yesterday, took the family. Just, uh, really hazy out this morning. Uh, there's been several fires and they're trying to get a handle on 
Uh, they're not completely controlled yet, but they're they're working on it. This time of year, we get dry thunderstorms, uh, lightning strikes, and people who won't pay attention to what they're doing. Uh, a couple of these fires were man caused. A couple of them were lightning strikes. But uh, anyway, that's why it's so hazy today. The air is really nice right now. Really enjoying this. It's about 6:30 this morning, and uh, there's more traffic than I expected. But uh, people go to get out of the valley and enjoy the the northern part of the state. So you get a lot of traffic headed that way. So hope you all are getting out, getting the rides now that it's become summer. You folks in the north. The frozen north up in Canada are being able to get out now and enjoy your short season. Uh, that'd be kind of crazy for me uh, to have a, a long winter since I'm not used to that. Uh, I imagine that uh, you don't want to miss a single minute when it's rideable weather. And we're fortunate down here in the southwest that uh, you can ride pretty much any day of the year, depending on how much heat you want to put up with. And it doesn't get that cold. We get in the 30s here, uh, even the high 20s sometimes in the winter. Uh, I've ridden in that, and I can tell you, well, I don't have to tell you people about the cold country, that the 20s is pretty cold on the bike. Different subject, uh, I put out a video on uh, the new tour pack that I've got, and this is the first actual ride I've taken with it, and I don't even know it's there, so that's a good thing. Uh, I didn't really know if it was going to mess with the Airstream or anything, or stability, but it does not. Once again, the Harley engineers seem to know what they're doing. Um, and uh, the light looks good on the bike, and it is detachable with this new, uh, what they call, hold-fast system. I like the hold-fast system better than the old detachables because it doesn't rattle. And they figure out a way to uh, adjust the mounts so that if you do have any play in it, you can adjust it out. And that was a thing that was really needed. I, I had the, the uh, backrest on one of my Dynas. It rattled so bad it was about to drive you nuts at idle. You know how Dynas shake with the rubber mounted. And it would just rattle, 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 rattle. And it just drove me nuts. And uh, the only way to fix it back then is we'd wrap electrical tape around the, uh, the mounts. And then it would make it super hard to get things off and on. Uh, on the last dyno that I had, I skipped the detachables completely and just put the hard mount on with a short backrest. Just a place to anchor down the tail bag that I had for it. Uh, speaking of dynas, I do miss my dyna. Uh, they had kind of a raw edge and just a sporty feel that uh, is hard to match. Uh, I'd like to have another one one of these days. Uh, not at the expense of this uh, really, really wonderful uh, soft tail heritage. But I'd like to have another one to rip around on, and uh, uh, maybe one of these days. I see the prices on the uh, the older street bobs are getting down there. Uh, the pinnacle of that evolution, in my opinion, was the uh, Lowrider S with the 110 in it. Uh, I used to take my Dyna to the drag strip, and. Uh, and it ran pretty good. It had a fuel pack on it, pipes, uh, stage one, and uh, I run in the high 13s and with my fat ass on it, and uh, at right around 98, 99 miles an hour. And I think I could have got it faster if I just learned how to race a little bit better. But you do it once or twice a year, you don't exactly get a lot of practice. But uh, the 110s, oh shit. 110s uh, would just spank me on the drag strip. There's a guy I ran against several times, and I could stay with him right up to about uh, maybe a third of the way down the track, and then they would just sprint away. That 110 has some has some lungs and uh, good motor. Uh, some people didn't like the twin cams. Uh, I thought they were okay. Uh, I thought they vibrated a little bit more than they should have. Uh, but uh, that's okay. It was Harley-Davidson. They're gonna vibrate. Uh, 
Now that said, this this Heritage uh, has a twin counterbalance Milwaukee 8. Great big pistons on a 114 cubic inch motor and uh, it really doesn't vibrate that much. And uh, it has a little more of a buzz in the handlebars at certain speeds as you probably noticed. But not that intrusive. It does make my thumb tingle sometimes. I gotta move my hand around. Anyway. No, nothing is perfect. I've been seeing a lot of people on the internet uh, predicting the demise of Harley Davidson. I talked about this a little bit last week. Uh, I think uh, people are just uh, jumping to extremes. That seems to be the way of the world these days is to go to an extreme uh, right away without really thinking about it. Uh, Harley Davidson still makes money. Uh, they're not selling what they used to, but no motorcycle manufacturers, with maybe the exception of Royal Enfield, is uh, selling more motorcycles than they used to. Uh, people just are not buying them, and then with this recession that's coming, that's here, the, the COVID thing, it's, it's, it's really slowed things down, but uh, I've noticed the dealerships that I've been in uh, are starting to run a little low on bikes, uh, mostly because Harley shut down production for a couple months and I think they're back into production now but uh, that is uh, something that uh, they'll catch up with and uh, Harley-Davidson sells every bike they make it may take some of them a few months into the next year but uh, you don't see anything like unsold 2018s like you do in some of the some of the manufacturers dealers so anyway this is Randy T-Bird in Arizona. I'm stopping for gas and a little short break and then I'm going to uh, record some more later. So anyway, stay safe and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, it's Randy. Randy T-Bird again. Just out catching some more some more ride video. Sunday morning. I just stopped at a, one of my favorite little turnouts. Uh, it's a trailhead off-road area. It's a good place to stop for stretch your legs, whatever. And I got kind of a, a gripe, a rant, whatever. Um, apparently people pull in here and they do whatever they do and they just dump their garbage all over the place. Now there's not a trash can here or anything, but people are dumping entire bags of garbage out on the trailhead and the garbage. I mean, come on people. You know, how about some how about some pride? How about some decency? I mean, did your mothers never teach you any manners? I mean, it just kind of pisses me off. It's this beautiful countryside. I mean, just look at those mountains, the superstitious mountains over there. Look at that, but people got to throw their garbage on the ground. Uh, I don't get it. It's not your yard, I suppose. Uh, just just kind of pisses me off. I've been noticing this area has been getting worse and worse. And uh, I don't have any way to haul it out uh, on the bike, of course. But, uh, you know, people get your heads out of your asses. Anyway, that off my chest. Still pretty nice out. The air is cool. It's not going to be that way for much longer. Uh, so I have uh, this video is on the way back, uh, headed towards home. Been out for a couple, three hours, and just uh, enjoying the morning. I get home, and I got to do some major uh, bug gut scrubbing on the bike. It's getting really uh, really covered. I wipe down the windshield and stuff when I get home from rides. Just try to keep the build up from uh, getting so bad that it scratches the windshield when I clean it. But I'm going to have to pull the windshield off and get behind it because these bugs seem to manage to uh, uh, kamikaze themselves into places that I didn't even think they could get to. So, anyway, that's going to... Got to clean things up. Yeah, that's kind of my, my thing. The air is starting to clear up a little bit. It was really hazy this morning because of the fires. And it's still fairly hazy, but it's getting better. The air will uh, clear out.
around as the breezes pick up throughout the day. We usually don't get much breeze in the morning, but in the afternoons we do. Anyway, there's a few bikes out this morning that I, I talked to a, a gentleman at the rest one of the rest areas uh, out riding his uh, Harley Tri Glide, and uh, that's pretty cool. I've never ridden one of those, uh, a friend that had one, uh, but I've never ridden one. Uh, I understand that they're a whole different game, kind of not like a bike, not like a car, not even like a bike with a sidecar, I guess that's another whole game that's different. But they're interesting, you know, I think it keeps a lot of people riding uh, that normally wouldn't be able to ride. Uh, that have maybe some physical limitations, uh, bad legs, bad knees, uh, just older people that, that don't have the physical strength that they used to, and you know, and maybe some people that just like the feeling of a three-wheeler. You know, I think Harley has uh, filled a niche uh, for that, and uh, you know, along with Can-Am, who seems to sell a lot of those spiders, uh, I think they're getting people out riding that normally wouldn't be riding, and that's 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 cool. We need more people riding. And, uh, anyway, yeah, the air is definitely uh, clearing up a little bit. You gotta wonder what these houses out here in the middle of the desert cost. Like they're building a whole new one out there. There's got to be some half million dollar plus houses. They're they're really large. And, uh, been out here plenty exclusive countryside. I didn't even think it was. Uh, I thought it was state land or maybe even reservation land out here. I guess not. I guess it's some private land out here. Arizona is largely state land. And, and uh, ranch land, but I guess there's still a lot of private property. I don't suppose it'd be too bad to live out here. It's cooler at night. The air is air is cleaner than the city. Uh, maybe if I win the lottery, we've got a bunch of lottery tickets at home. We'd have to check out today to see if we uh, became rich. If we have become rich, then uh, you'll be seeing some new bikes on this channel, too. Not replacement bikes, but additional bikes. So, I can always dream. It's fun to dream. But, uh, anyway. I uh, got some comments on a video that I did eight or nine months ago today, and uh, somebody disagreed with... Uh, what I had going on, and you know, then that's fine. You know, not everybody can be think the same as you, or I, I don't expect it. And uh, you know, I appreciate your opinion. And uh, all that I ask is to keep it civil. Uh, I haven't had to block anybody yet, except for these spam spam commenters. I will block you if you're a spammer. Uh, but uh, I haven't had any serious trolls yet, but uh, I will delete your comments and I will uh, block you if, if you're going to be abusive. And, you know, everybody so far has been great. It's been great to meet people and talk to people, but I guess there's people out there that really have nothing better to do than to criticize and whatever. Just uh I know we all we all realize you know you need to be tolerant of other people's viewpoints. I may not agree with everything that everybody does to their motorcycles. Uh, I may not agree with what you ride, but you know what? It's your right, and it's your prerogative to do that. And uh, so that I guess I'm in kind of a ranty mood. The the, the litter really really set me off. So anyway, so again, I haven't had to block anybody, and that's good. But, uh, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. Most of the traffic now is headed north. I'm headed south, southwest. So it's kind of nice being out here without the 
the bumper to bumper stuff that you get in the afternoon. It's almost like a rush hour out here for people coming back from the north. This uh, settlement or town that you see uh, dead ahead, that's uh, Fountain Hills and Fort McDowell. That's a subdivision that's out east of uh, Scottsdale. Uh, and uh, you go past it on, on there. They've got a quite a bit of building going on, as you can see, going way back into the hillsides there. I do know some people that live there. Pretty nice area. It only hasn't been out here for about 40 years. Uh, I remember we used to ride out here and there was nothing but a gas station out here. But, uh, back in the day when uh, a 30 mile ride on your bike was an achievement, or you're riding old bikes that uh, you didn't know were going to make it from one area to the next. And always a celebration you got there and back without some sort of breakdown. Uh, I had my share, most of them, well, you fix and you move on, you know, when, you, when you're riding old English bikes, uh, you had a lot of weird things happen, a lot of cracked brackets, a lot of bad wires, uh, blown headlights, the old Triumph used to have an ammeter gauge that was mounted in the headlight, very classy looking thing, and I don't think I've ever seen one that wasn't burned up, uh, the one I had looked like it had smoked. And it didn't work, of course. A positive ground system, I guess it's just easier to short out, and I have no scientific basis in saying that. It just seemed that I did have more dead shorts and burned wires on the, the old uh, the old Triumphs than uh, any other bike that I've ever owned. But you know what? You learned, you fixed them, you moved on, you enjoyed them. They were enjoyable to ride. Anyway, I'm coming to an area now, uh, let me see, this is the Verde River we're crossing. It's still got a fair amount of water in it, considering uh, the time of year is starting to get warm. Pretty cool, it's on a reservation, you can't really access it unless you're, I think, a member, or you have to buy some sort of pass or whatever, but, uh, you know, that's good, you know, they, the uh, folks on the reservation uh, need to make a living, and uh, they need to support their... Uh, their world out here so you know good on them well this is a fort mcdowell i'm gonna sign off here this is randy t-bird out here in arizona hope you're enjoying your day and getting out on the bike uh don't forget to uh, like and subscribe if uh you don't like well you know make a comment but uh tell me what you think i could do better anyway randy t-bird i'm gonna sign out now catch you later